Hello, welcome. Marlin here. Today we're working on these adorable mitten cookies. I unfortunately don't have a link for the cookie cutter. That was a find at a local secondhand store, but the rest of the supplies you'll find in the description box. When you make purchases via my Amazon links, you're actually contributing to my channel without it actually costing you more money. We make a commission from those sales, so thank you very much. And now on to the step-by-step -step tutorial. I'm working on my mittens. I flipped over one of the cookies before baking so that I had them kind of on both directions. And now I'm just outlining and flooding. Just the this top part, I'm leaving the bottom. I don't want to get any of my stencil on there. So the best way to not get um, any of my decorating on there is to simply not have it there then I can just mindlessly crank out here the little mitten part and we can finish the cuff later. And I'm just quickly outlining. I have a relatively big cut on my tipless bag so that I can work somewhat faster. And then we'll detail these up. There. And now a shake. And now I'm going to let these dry so that I can come in and stencil them. Okay. There we go. And that's it. It's difficult to really show the effect that I'm getting on these mittens, but I want them to look felted. This is super smooth when it's just icing. You see, it looks like porcelain and these are supposed to be mittens. So I'm, so I'm trying to soften the surface. I'm using this, okay? Now this is different than Saran Wrap. Saran Wrap's plastic is much softer. This, if you squish it, it crunches. You hear it? And so it's got more of like um, a hard kind of uh, crumple. And so when you use it to dab your icing, it just works better in my opinion. And all I'm doing is I've added a bit of icing to it and I just dab the surface of a dry, dry icing here. Now I'm pressing, you obviously don't wanna have wet icing here as you're pounding into your cookie you're going to damage it. And all I'm doing here is just dabbing a super thin layer of icing. And you can see what happens. It creates kind of like a more matte and felted look to the surface of the cookie. And I'm just, you see here I got a big glob, but you just keep at it and it spreads it out and you just, Dab, dab, dab. Really no skill required, but it makes such a cute finish. My base is taupe. I got the gray Americolor kind of color kit, and I have to tell you, I love it. Some colors tend to be the same. This is six different shades of gray, and I really, really like it. This is more of a light color. It's if I put it next to it, you can see it's just different than the taupe. I'm just gonna dab a little bit more here at the top. And then this one is done. And I'm just running through my batch here. My little set is two mittens. And I think I mentioned I flipped one of them over so that they would bake like you have both sides. You can have them both be like the same direction, but I just wanted them to be right and left hand. And you can see this dries so fast. It's such a thin layer. It dries super quickly. But in the case of this, or like a teddy bear, or these types of cookie designs, this surface technique really gives the cookie a nice background. And 
And that's it. We're going to let this dry and then I'm going to come in and stencil the cookie. Here's my cookie. It's on the big side. I had to kind of rotate my stencil holder. And for my mitten here, I don't want the whole mitten to be all the same. You lose a bit the design when it's just like this big kind of area. It all looks the same. Things like a mitten, it's round. It has different sections. And if you have the pattern, it just doesn't look right in my opinion. So I've cut out a little piece of acetate that's masking the thumb. You can see here it's a bit rounded, you see? And now I'm resting the stencil, the design here at the top, and I'm having it go straight down like so. And then I'm just clipping that in there to hold it. Now it's going to kind of hold that masked area right there. I can see my masked areas coming into, so I'm just gonna adjust the stencil a little bit. Here, let me look at it again now. I'm masking there and I just want yeah there so the the seam to the masked area is just going to hit right at the edge of that pattern and I'm just clipping that in and now I've got my scraper and I'm just going to stencil my design off. Now I have a lot of excess icing which I'm just using my needle here and I'm scraping off around the perimeter my excess icing. Now in the case of other stencils when you overload and it kind of melds together, it doesn't look right. But in the case of this knit pattern, while it just looks like a tight yarn that's knit together, right? I'm just removing that. There. And we just want to flatten the edge here so that it's more rounded. And there are my two mittens, you see? I might actually take off right here. There. And that's it. We're gonna let this dry before moving on. Here are some snowflakes made out of fondant and they've dried. And I'm going to paint these in rose gold. I thought it would complement the color of my mittens. Here's my luster dust. This is Rolcom. I've added some high proof alcohol to it. I'm working on a piece of parchment paper just in case some of the sugar kind of gets released there and then I'm not able to detach my decoration from my work surface. This kind of ensures I'll be able to do that. And you can somewhat quickly work if you're working on a piece of parchment paper, you don't have to worry about dirtying up your work surface. This was made using a plunger cutter. A plunger cutter has like a little so you, there's a cutter, and then when you remove your cutter, the piece is often stuck in the hole when they're small like this. Well, with, in the case of a plunger, there's a piece of plastic that you can press from behind and kind of pop out your decoration. So for fine detail, like the little arms on the snowflake, it really makes it kind of easier to make sure that they'll pop out. So I'm just very quickly painting these. Here are the cookies. I've added a little cuff to the design and there's my little snowflake. The color looks perfect 
with the taupe there and I'm going to show you what I'm doing. So my icing is super stiff. I want every kind of uh, line to hold. I don't want this thing to fall apart, like to blend together. I'm starting here and I'm just doing a circular motion like we've seen so many uh, do on the unicorn horns. So you're just doing a circular motion like that and stop, rotate, and you're doing exactly the same thing right up against it. By rotating it, the direction changes a little bit. And you just keep rotating, doing the same thing. Don't go too big with your circle. Rotate, make sure that your cookie's dry so that you can not like worry about sticking your finger. The stenciling dries super fast, so it's not like you have to wait a long time. And you just keep going. I tried to do all one direction first, leaving a gap, but it really made it tough to work in between the gaps without messing up. So you just rotate your cookie, it's easier. Then they fit perfectly, you don't have to worry about like getting on this side. It was tight to get in between. And you see what happens when you rotate the cookie? The angle of your rotation changes and gives it a little bit more of a knit look. All right, now in my wet icing, so important that you put this in the wet icing. I'm squishing in my little snowflake decoration and then I'm sprinkling some non-pare white, non-pare, totally optional, but I thought it added a little something to them. Now the icing is so stiff that these are the trickiest things to add when your icing is crusted, so you might just give them the very slightest little press in there to make sure that they're in the surface of that thick, thick, thick icing. But there we have our little mitten. Here are the cookies, painted and not painted. I airbrushed them in the same color as the food gel. It's taupe, it's called. Um, I'm not sure that I like it with the airbrush. They kind of, kind of, ish look dirty not sure i think i might leave them just the way that they are i did want to try it with the airbrush i just hit in the center of the knit here around the perimeter and here are the completed cookies probably my best design ever in one color these are all just taupe in different shades and then the little white sprinkles and rose gold snowflake to kind of finish it off I think an effective design. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future uploads and I'll see you next time.